I'm really excited to talk about Rick Hansen's newest book, Neurodharma. Uh, Rick has been a great teacher and friend of mine, and I've learned so much from him. He's a neuropsychologist and New York Times bestselling author. And in his newest book, Neurodharma, it's all about seven really important themes. They're almost like brain hacks or um, I, I am actually reluctant to call them brain hacks because they're so profound. They are uh, practices that he's collected from many different traditions. And these seven practices are steadying the mind, warming the heart, resting in fullness, being wholeness, receiving nowness, opening into allness, and finding timelessness. Quite a mouthful, but each one of these themes is guided in a very profound way. And his whole book almost feels as if you are going into an immersive retreat, perhaps somewhere in the mountains with Rick. Uh, we actually spent some time with him in Joshua Tree. So when I read this book, I just thought about his voice and uh, learning from him uh, all these timeless, great traditions. One thing that I really like from his book, I'm going to read is about the theme of themes of letting be, letting go, and letting in. Firstly, you can simply be with whatever you're experiencing, accepting it, feeling it, perhaps even exploring it. And as you be with it, your experience might change, but you're not trying to nudge it or be too directive one way or another. Secondly, you can release what is painful or harmful such as by easing tension in the body, venting feelings or challenging thoughts that aren't true or helpful, or disengaging from desires that hurt you or others. And thirdly, he writes, you can grow what's enjoyable or useful, developing virtues and skills, becoming more resilient, more grateful, more compassionate. And in a nutshell, let be, let go, let in. If your mind is like a garden, you can observe it, you can pull weeds and you can plant flowers. I love that. We often talk about um, that metaphor of your mind being like a garden and how you are the gardener of your mind. In fact, when we, talk, um, when we taught about 20,000 students at the National University of Singapore, we would often remind them, uh, are you weeding your garden? Are you weeding out the unhelpful limiting beliefs that are holding you back? Are you fertilizing your garden with helpful practices and learning and routines? Um, and also, are you uh, constantly um, enjoying your garden? Because there's all the stuff that you're planting, the beautiful flowers, the stuff that the good stuff that's in there. But are you actually making time to visit your garden of resources and actually take stock of what you have to fall back on or what you have in your life that's so beautiful and rich? So Rick writes, of these, letting be is the most essential. It's where we start, and sometimes it's all we can do. Just ride out that storm of fear and anger without making things worse. And as practice matures, increasingly, we simply be with the next moment as it arises and passes away and becomes something else. But this is not the whole of practice. We can't only be with the mind. We must also work with it. And while there are pitfalls in working with the mind, such as getting caught up in fixing oneself, there are also pitfalls in not working with the mind. For instance, I've known people who are good at observing their own minds and also chronically unhappy as well as unskillful with others. So Rick writes, we shouldn't work with the mind in order to avoid being with it, nor be with the mind to avoid working with it. In this book, what I learned from it were seven key practices in order to handle stress, uh, heal pain, to feel at ease with others, and also rest in the sense of my own innate goodness. And what I love about Rick's writing is that everything is so easy to understand. They are really profound and huge concepts really uh, cultivated from many different wisdom traditions, but he does a great job in grounding them in neuroscience and making them really easy to understand and very personal through his own stories of hiking, being in nature and interacting with other people. So I highly recommend uh, getting this book, Neurodharma, and uh, let me know how it goes.